What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. And today, I am going to show you how to set up Dolphin on PC in 2022. So, that being said, let's get started. So, the first thing you're gonna need is obviously Dolphin. So if you come to this website right here, uh, you click this long blue button and download the, the latest uh, beta version. And once you do that, I already have it downloaded, so I'm not gonna download it again. But once you do that, you're pretty much good to go on that. Uh, now, to unzip, to unzip the, uh, the file, you're going to need 7-zip. Which is this website right here, which will also be linked in the description. Uh, you could also use WinR, but uh, I like 7-Zip more because uh, it's 100% free and they don't bug you to buy the full version after a while. Um, and all, all WinR adds is like its own uh, uh, file explorer. So uh, I just stick with... Uh, 7 zip. And this is more cleaner in my opinion. All right. And so after you have those uh those two files, you are good to go. Next thing you want to do is go to your folder that uh you saved the emulator to. Me, I put mine in a emulator folder. Uh, it's literally called emulators. So, um, and then within that folder, I made a folder specifically for the GameCube and Wii stuff. I just call it GC. And then, here is the file that we're gonna extract. And to save some time, I already has some uh, games on here. Uh, just so you, I can show you guys how the, the path works. Uh, so I can show you how to get, get the games to show up on the uh, Dolphin home screen. So what we're gonna do is right click if you're on Windows 11, you need to go to uh, Show More Options. If you're on Windows 10, you don't have to worry about that. Go to 7-Zip. And I'm going to click Extract here. Shouldn't take no time at all. All right. And there we go. Now we can go inside of the folder. And here's all of your files for the emulator. There's two EXE files that you can that you can find uh, that have to do with Dolphin. This one, uh, this one not sure what that does, but we're not gonna worry about that one. Uh, we're gonna click the dolphin.exe not the dolphin tool.exe. And because I already have a uh, a directory, you can see my games, but what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna go in here and uh, I'm gonna go in here and remove that directory. So it can be like a fresh, uh, a fresh setup. All right. So 
So, the first thing we're going to do is going to set up the controller. Uh, with the controller, it's actually really simple. You put, you click on this drop down menu. You pick the preferred controller you want to use. Uh, it does have a uh, GameCube adapter support, so that's pretty nice. Um, uh, steering wheel support and support for other controllers. But we're going to stick with the standard controller. Hit config. And mine's is already set up. Um, this is actually my this is actually my second time recording this video. Um but yeah this is uh uh it's already set up um because I guess Dolphin has a separate area that it stores its uh uh settings files so um it remembers what I did to set it up and stuff. So it makes it a little bit easier for the tutorial too. So basically, uh, you'll click over here and uh, whatever, whatever input that you need uh, for Xbox, it's X input. For PlayStation, I'm not sure. I think it's direct input. Um, so for whatever controller you need it for, just pick that option. For me, it's the Xbox, so it's already selected. Uh, and then you just highlight the button that you want. It'll give you a small uh, time frame to push the button. So you kind of got to be quick, but yeah. Uh, and then once uh, once you're done with that, you're pretty much good to go. Um, when you get over here to the uh, L and R buttons, you want to make sure you set your buttons for these the uh the analog triggers um reason being is because super mario sunshine is one game just off the top of my head that uses the analog triggers and if your controller doesn't have analog support for the triggers then I guess stay away from any game that uses analog trigger that utilizes the analog triggers, uh, and then just set it for the normal uh, L and R uh, buttons. Um, you can also set up a motor if you want. Um, this is just to give this the vibration feature. Uh, I did it but you don't have to. This is completely optional. But what I will show you is let's say, for example, let's say, for example, you decide you want to change your mind about uh, having the rumble. All you got to do is basically highlight it and hit the backspace. And that's it. And then you hit OK. And now you don't have a uh you don't have rumble anymore. Me for the Xbox controller specifically, left left uh the left motor kinda is more of a violent rumble, whereas the right motor is more of a gentle rumble. So that's the one that I chose. So you pick which one you want and then you hit select and that, and there you go. And then you can test it if you want, make sure it's to your liking. Uh, I think you can change the intensity up here. Uh, I haven't messed with it yet, so I don't, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, once you have uh, your motor selected, you can just hit OK, and there you go. Now you have a motor again. So since we don't have to do anything, for, since I don't have to do anything here, uh, I'm going to just close it out. 
The west side, we will worry about later because that is a whole nother can of worms. So, uh, <laughs> um, I will look real quick because, okay, yeah. So yeah, we'll handle, we'll handle this later. Uh, or I probably will do it in a separate video. Right now, this one is just setting up the GameCube side of it. Uh, the next thing you want to do is click on this little monitor right here that says graphics. Click on that. And... I don't know why they make this make this window so unnecessarily uh, large. Um, but in this uh, uh, option, in this settings, in the general uh, the general tab, you want to uh, select your renderer basically. So you got OpenGL, DirectX. Uh, uh, Direct 13, 11, Direct, uh, uh, I said 13, sorry, Direct 3D 11, and then you got Direct 3D 12, Vulkan, Software rend Renderer, I don't recommend it, no, definitely don't re recommend it, so the four that I would test out depending on your computer, is OpenGL, Direct3D11, 12, and Vulkan. So I guess that's four. Yeah. Okay. These two at the bottom, don't mess with those. I highly advise against it. <laughs> me, I'm going to leave it on Vulkan because uh, it seems to work pretty good for me. Uh, then you want to. Then you can select your graphics card. If you're on a normal PC, uh, and you have multiple uh, graphics cards installed, then yeah, you want to pick the one that you want to use. Uh, for some reason, it will not let me use the uh, the CPU as a, as its graphics card, but. I guess that's a good thing because <laughs> using CPU the CPU to uh, to run emulators can be a bit iffy sometimes. Next thing you can do is uh, select your aspect ratio. So you can either do you could do sixteen by nine, sixteen by nine, which is widescreen or uh, Four by three, which is like the box, and then you can just leave it on auto as well. Because some games on the on the GameCube, believe it or not, support widescreen. Uh, so I'm gonna leave mine on auto. Um, everything else on this page you can leave as is. Uh, enhancements. Uh, you can upscale it. You can go from its original uh, native all the way up to 5K if you want. But I highly recommend you have a good PC that can handle 5K. You can also do 4K if you wish. Again, do you need a decent PC that can support 4K? But for me, I'm going to go with 1080p because I think that's good enough for me. Uh, as far as anti-aliasing, uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to go up to times four, but you can choose whichever one you, you want. Um, See, no, no, no. I'm going to leave that on none. This one right here, this option right here is the one that I'm, uh, I'm going to leave on, t on times four. 
Uh, this one I'm going to leave on off. Um, and everything else you can leave as is. Packs. You can mess around with this. Uh, I haven't messed around with it, so I don't know what any of this really does, per se. But, uh, yeah, you can mess around with it and see what works for you. Um, oh, yeah, back on general, I forgot about this one. I normally turn the frame rate off or sh uh, show FPS off. But for this video, I'm going to leave it on for the time being. So you guys can see uh, what frame rate you're getting. And then advanced, obviously we're gonna leave that alone. Uh, the next thing is the config option. Um, most of this is personal preference. Enable dual core, uh, dual core speed up. You can leave that on if you wish. Enable cheats. That's personal preference. Um, not sure what this is, but uh, I'm gonna leave that off. And. Oh, that's cool. You can actually select your region right here if you want. So I'm going to leave mine from the United States. And that's pretty much it for this page. So yeah, uh, the, the two that I see that is technically, I would say required is this one. The, um, The enable uh, dual core speed up. That one I would I would turn on if it's not on. Uh, and then your region, obviously. Everything else is preference. Interface. Begin. For, uh, it's all that boils down to preference. And for what I've seen, this this right here, the uh, the theme doesn't really change anything. At least that not that I noticed anyway. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this is mostly personal preference. Cause I haven't messed with any of these settings in here. Audio. Again, personal preference. Um, if you're having audio issues, you can probably fix it here. Now, here's the important part. And that's setting a path to where your games are. So the way this is set up is is kind of nice because you can actually uh you can actually have more than just one path. So let's say for example I have games on my computer and on an external drive. I can actually set both of those paths and they'll all show up uh they'll all show up on the home screen. But since I only have games on my computer, we're not going to use that feature. But we are going to look for our games. So click on, uh, so you click on add and then navigate to where your games are. 
And once you find it, you hit add folder. And there you go. And you can already see the games show up over here. Um, all this other stuff down here, don't touch. Unless you really, really want to. But yeah, uh, I wouldn't mess with anything down here. Uh, the rest of these, like the GameCube and the Wii, uh, we we're not we're not gonna mess with right now. But uh, this one, this one, if you want. If you want multiple memory cards, you can select uh, you, you, you can select the same as the first option for uh, slot B, um, which is actually what I'm going to do. I don't think I need to do it, but that's what I'm going to do. Oh wow, you can even uh, add a broadband adapter uh, if you want. All right, that's something I didn't know. Um, I'm gonna do that to nothing for now. Um, and then everything else, everything else on this page, you can leave alone. And then we're not going to mess with advance because we don't really need to. All right. So after that, you're pretty much good to go. So now what we can do is we can actually start playing the game. So we're going to go to Smash Melee. And... Then that this warning came up again, uh, I can actually tell you, uh, these, depending on where you get the games from, uh, whether if you got them from a website or something like that, um, chances are they will be encrypted in what they call an end kit format. And what I do is in the next video that I do, I will, uh, I will, uh, show you how to decrypt it and make it into a normal ISO because, uh, uh, Dolphin does not like the encrypted ROMs all that much. They still work, but uh, you, you have more of a chance to have issues when it's encrypted like this. So, you want to click this box right here that says, I am uh, aware of the risk and want to continue. Uh, and if you want to completely disregard this, just hit don't, uh, don't show it, don't show this again. And just hit OK. And the game should start running.
So that is Smash, and then what we'll test out next is uh, Mario Kart. That one is another one that's, that gives people a bit of trouble when it comes to emulating it. And then here's this warning again. So as long as I don't click this, this warning, this warning will always pop up. So um, once we deal with the, this issue, we won't even have to worry about it. So I'm gonna click this, hit OK. Nintendo! Uh, one thing I didn't know about this game is this game actually, uh, at its at the time supported the Ethernet adapter. Which I thought was kind of cool. Let's go! Let's start a quick voice real quick. The menu the menu uh doesn't cause too much trouble. But get into a race, that's what we'll find out. Mario. Okay. Um, yeah, this one's probably so we'll use this one. Just do the first cut. Press A, A again. I haven't figured out how to do the piece yet. Like the discarding piece. Mario time! Oh, 
So yeah. Um, hopefully, you grasp all. Uh, you grasp it. Yeah, I can't even talk right now. Hopefully, you grasp how to actually set this up. Um, it's really not that hard. Um, also, I was about to forget again. Up here, in the top, on the top right corner is where you can see your frame rate. And this game is doing almost 60, which is nice. So yeah, that's pretty good, especially for the graphics card that I have. I mean, I didn't expect any less, but yeah, it's actually it's actually pretty or uh, doing a pretty decent frame rate. So yeah, um, hopefully this helped you out in getting this all set up. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, and I will try my best to help you out the best I can. And, uh, yeah, with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Later.